Hey there, Photo Universe. So it's the end of August 2020, and I'm doing a what's in my bag video because it's taken me a month to get all this stuff organized. And I probably had maybe 20 packages from B&H delivered of all the things that I need to do some 4x5 photography out in the field. Uh, pretty fascinating. Um, I ordered a Fuji X-T4 to do video, which is uh, what I'm uh, filming with right now. And uh, that came in the mail and I got uh, the box open and I uh, didn't have the uh, 235, the new battery that goes to it, any of those charts. I got 12 of the 126s for all my other X-T3 and X-Pro3 and et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and I, I had to wait two hours before I could use my X-T4 before the battery was charged. And um, so I ordered this, uh, uh, I ordered a Zone 6 4x5 um, that I found off of eBay from a place called the Photo Source, and I think they're in Santa Barbara, California, and they were great, um, and it was a good deal. Um, so I got the camera, and uh, I didn't have any film holders. I didn't have any film. Uh, I didn't have, uh, any, you know, a changing bag and all that stuff. I had to go find all that stuff or order it new. And so finally, after, and I, there's still pieces I'm missing but they're minor and they're, they're on their way. So before the next trip, which will be the Bend trip, going to Central Oregon, um, the, end, uh, the beginning of September. And I should have all those pieces in play. But uh, so here's, here's what I came up with. This is a Kelty Red Wing 50. And it's a, a backpack. It's not necessarily a photo backpack, but um, it's just a regular backpack. But what I did was I ordered some of those uh, Tenba BYOB uh, bags that go in there that hold camera equipment. And it turns pretty much any bag into a, um, into a photo bag. And so let's see what we have in here. So these, first off, these are um, the F64 uh, film holder pouches. And these are about 20 bucks a piece. And they can go on your belt and things. I don't know if I'm going to use them that way. Um, and in here I have in a gallon Ziploc, I've got some Toyo 4x5 sheet film holders. And uh, normally I have six, but I shot a few and I have to reload those. Um, so I, uh, I have six uh, of those. That's 12 sheets of film ready to be process uh, ready to be uh, exposed. And um, this, I have three of these. So this is C uh, and it just so happens that's the one I'm using for color film. But um, really it's A, B and C. I could have done one, two, and three actually as well, obviously. Um, but the C pouch, and so what's in here is there's going to be three film holders with uh, Kodak Ektar 100 and three film holders with Fuji Provia 100F. And that's for color. Um, I have a changing bag down here somewhere. There's a changing bag. And uh, these one gallon Ziplocs are great because dust is the enemy of film. And uh, so that's a Patterson changing bag, and uh, that'll be coming with me. I'm not going to take that in the field. That'll be at uh, base camp. And um, so then here is the A film holder, and this has, um, I managed to get uh, a dozen Fidelity Elite film holders off of eBay for 20 bucks a piece that were new old stock from someplace in Ohio. Um, it's really interesting. These came in their original boxes, which I don't have anymore. I guess I threw them away. But um, and uh, these are brand new, which which is really fantastic. They're they're old, but they're brand new, and that was cool. So anyway, in the A pouch, uh, this is black and white. This is Ilford FP4 Plus, and I like to develop that in Rodinol. Rodinol, yeah. <laughs> if it still existed, you can mix it from scratch. But I like to develop. Um, FP4 Plus, um, my developer choice is Kodak D76, which is Ilford ID11. And I use the Ilford because it's just easier to mix up and easier to get. Um, so that's uh, 12 sheets of FP4 Plus in there. And then in here, the B pouch, I have 12 more. So that's six more, six more film holders with 12 sheets of FP4 Plus. This will be back at base camp just so I have some ready to go. I don't have to load them up if, if I want to go out in the afternoon or whatever and shoot some more black and white. Um, then, so let's put the film holders over here. Then in here, 
So we'll get to this in a second. This is the 10 to 10 BYOB bag in all of its gray glory. I wonder if that's 18% gray. That'd be cool. You wouldn't have to bring a gray card with you. But um, I've got one of those. That's on order, actually. I've got one coming. So this is the um, 10 by 13 size BYOB. And in here is, huh? sounds like I got a message. In here is my Zone 6 Mahogany 4x5. And I was really lucky to get this. Um, I'll have to put that on a tripod. Yeah, the only downside, I love the Zone 6 4x5. I remember back in the day, I actually bought one new from, um, from uh, Zone 6 about 1998. And it was, um, it was serial number 4554. I remember that. It was a walnut Zone 6. And I remember back in the day, uh, they used to make a big deal out of the fact that they had their own wood lot and they would uh, um, season the wood for over a year to make sure uh, they had their own kiln to dry it, the wood. Um, so the wood was dimensionally stable, et cetera, et cetera. So there was a lot that went into the Zone 6 camera. It was a pretty high quality camera, uh, you know, uh, one of the highest quality 4x5s uh, made in Newfane, Vermont. And um, it's got two levels built into the back. And so when you put it on your tripod, and this is the tripod I'll be using. This is my old um, Gitzo, um, it's a two series. I forget which one. They, they, don't make, they, they make it still, but it's not this particular model. Um, and that's a Kirk BH1 ball head. So what I do is uh, I use the levels and that'll uh, level it this way and level it that way. So I can get the camera level before I open it up. And then um, pop it open. It's got detents. This one was really clean. Photosource really did, came through on this camera. They, they, um, they advertised it as clean and it was. There was no question about that. So there's some detents there. And that's the Zone 6 right there. So great camera. I really enjoy it. I think they're really pretty too. Um, gold plated hardware, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, kind of gaudy, but um, really traditional. And, um, and it, uh, this one even came with a Fresnel lens already installed, which was great. Uh, they're doing something wrong here. And, um, and that was great. So uh, it's ready to go. So that's the Zone 6 4x5. Again, the only downside to the Zone 6 4x5 is the weight. And, um, and I actually ordered a Intrepid 4x5, which is two and a half pounds. So I'm looking forward to getting that. And that'll shave four pounds off of the weight when I start carrying it around. Um, but I'll, I'll end up using both because uh, I really enjoy the Zone 6. And um, there's a little bit more bellows draw. You can use uh, lenses anywhere from 65 to 300 with the Zone 6. Um, you can use a 75 with very limited movement, but it, it also came with the bag balls, which is great, which um, I can use for the wide angle stuff. And then um, I bit the bullet. I used to have a Pentax uh, one degree spot meter, which was great for the Zone system because it read out in EVs, which was really cool. Um, the only, Gossen makes the Starlight too, I think. But Sekonic is now making this 858. And um, it's, I really like it. Uh, one of the things I really like about it is it reads out in EVs. And I have it set for that. So this scale down at the bottom, I don't know if you can see that. Oh, there you go. That scale down at the bottom, it reads out in EVs, which is great. Because what I do is I meter a bright the brightest area in my image and I meter the dar darkest area in my image and then I hit averaging and then it gives me uh, puts that uh, right in the center and it shows me the dynamic range of the of the shot um, and, it, and it also the EVs translate into zones so if I know if I'm three up and three down I'm, I'm good to go um, I don't have to do any fancy processing or anything so um, I really like that in this meter. I don't know if the 758 and the 558 can do that. The fact that this reads out in EVs, I think is awesome. And um, it, it mimics my old Pentax spot meter, which I think is great. 
So I'm, I'm very pleased with this meter. Um, I've used it out in the bright sunlight a little bit because I know Ben Horn quest, uh, was questioning the ability to see the screen in bright sunlight. And I don't really have a problem. It seems bright enough. So I'm, I'm really uh, very pleased with this meter. And I'm tripping over my tripod here. Very pleased with that meter. So that's what's in this uh, BYO number 13 bag. And um, when the Intrepid comes, the Intrepid's in production right now. When the Intrepid shows up, I'll see if it fits in the 10. If it fits in the 10, I'll order another 10. Um, up in the top slot here, I've got my cable release, the uh, Nikon AR15, I believe it is. So that's in the Tenba 13. We'll put that over there. And so in the Tenba 10, this is kind of my support bag. I've got my dark cloth for focusing the camera. I've got a Peak 10X little loop for making sure the focus is in focus. I have my wide angle lens, which is a, came with the Zone 6 actually. This is a Kaltar 2N F6.8 um, 90 millimeter. And um, the Kaltar 2s were, were uh, Cal Calumet branded rodent stocks. And um, this is uh, this is late model production. It's got the black Copal Zero shutter. And it, it's this thing's mint. This thing was brand new. So uh, very excited about that. And like I said, it came with the bag bellows. I can use it without the bag bellows, but with very limited movement. So with the bag bellows, um, I have a full range of movement and it came with that, like I said. So that was great. That's my wide angle. Next up in the lens bag is, I believe this is the, yes, this is the uh, Nikon Nikkor 135. So the 90 millimeter, basically the rule of thumb with uh, 4x5 is uh, divide by a third, uh, divide by thirds. So to get a 35 millimeter equivalent focal length, so a 90 is about a 30. And so 90 millimeter on 4x5 is about a 30 millimeter on um, 35 millimeter. Um, a 135 is about a 40, 45 on uh, 135, uh, on 35 millimeter. And, um, and so, and this was a Nikkor. I bought this off of eBay, Japan. Um, it, they said it was mint. It came from some place in Japan, I don't remember. Uh, they said it was mint. Um, it is mint. It's in a Copal Zero shutter and it's virtually new, which was very exciting and the price was fantastic. Um, and the shipping, I had this thing in like three days from Japan. So very impressive, uh, very impressive buying camera gear from Japan. Uh, maybe somebody's had a bad experience, but that was, that's as good as it gets. And then the next lens I've got is a 210, which is about a 70 millimeter in 35 millimeter equivalent. And this is a Kaltar 2 and it's um, F6.8. And uh, again, this is virtually new and this came with the, um, zone six as well. And uh, so that's my three lenses for, for four by five. And what else is in the bag? I've got a uh, $11 stopwatch off of um, Amazon and it uh, does the job and the instructions on how to use it, etc., etc. And that's what's in there. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, why shoot film? Well, one of the advantages is, first of all, it's a challenge and it's fun. And uh, when you nail it, you nail it. And the other thing is, is that um, it's a silent witness. Um, in this day of Luminar, I mean, I got Luminar free with one of the Fujis um, or with all the Fujis and a Luminar 4. And I just took a crappy photograph in there and I'm putting these epic sunsets and epic, you know, so the Milky Way coming out of my, over the dog. I got the Milky Way coming, you know, over my dog in my living room. I, it's just to come on, really. So, you know, anything is possible to just sit in your room and make it. But if, if you have the film and you can put the film on a light box, you can prove what the scene looked like. Um, uh, the penny dropped for me. What really hit me was I was watching a Ben Horn video. And it was how he processed one of his shots. And the Fuji Velvia came up kind of blue, which Fuji Velvia has a tendency to do in shadow. And, um, and the transparency was kind of had a bluish cast to it. 
And in the video, you could clearly see uh, the video of him taking the photograph of the scene. You could clearly see that the image was more tan like Zion is. It's more uh, reddish tannish, uh, not the blue gray that Fuji was giving you. And he said, um, you know, and he said, when I processed this, I agonized over, you know, how much to make it like what I saw versus what the film gave me. And and he said he came up with a compromise. And when you look at the original Chrome and then you look at what he did and then you see the video, you I mean, that was absolutely and totally acceptable post processing in the sense that he made the scene more like what he remembered versus what the film did. And, 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 and the point is, is like the, the credibility factor is so huge there because it wasn't like, you know, the, all of a sudden the Milky Way is sprouting out of a slot canyon, you know, I mean, I mean, here Ben Horn is showing you the integrity, his integrity in the sense that like he's agonizing over the fact of should he make the scene more like what he remembered and change the color cast from the bluish to the tannish, reddish tannish, which is what it was. I mean, yeah, that, that's integrity. And that's what lends credibility to the art. Um, and that's what this is all about. That's what 4 by 5 is all about. The image quality is fantastic. And you've got a silent witness to the, I was there and this is what I saw. Um, in that example, you know, the film made a bluish cast, but you know that Fuji Velvia it tends to do that. So if you, if you bring it more back to what you saw, that's, that's totally reasonable. Um, but on the other hand, like in that scene, all of a sudden we didn't have this epic sunset when it was a cloudless day, right? I mean, because it wasn't there on a transparency and you can prove what, you, what was there. So, um, so that's, that's why film's so cool. Now for tripods, one of the reasons um, why I think film is cool. For tripods, I've got my old Gitzo. I think this is a 20... I'm going to have to put my cheaters on. <laughs> um, 2020 vision from about four feet to infinity, but I can't see close up anymore. Um, so this is a GT2541. And if you go up to B&H and type that in, um, it will give you the, what the modern equivalent of that is. Uh, this thing's about 20 years old and still going strong. That's a Kirk BH1. And I plan on using this tripod for all my 4x5 work. Um, it can also work for still photography with the Fujis. And then I just recently picked up for video work, I picked up this um, Gitzo GT1545T. And it came with the Gitzo ball head with, with the Arca Swiss. I mean, this is great. So uh, really impressive. This will be for my video work. And if I run out of film and I want to shoot a digital Fuji, um, that would be great for that as well. Or if I'm going on really long backpacking, hiking, whatever, if that ever happens. All right, I've got too many tripods here. So I've got a exposure notebook. That's important. Now for video work, um, I have the Fuji X-T4, which I'm using right now. I have a Fuji X-T3. I have the 10 to 24, I have the 55 to 200, I have the 18 to 55. Um, and that'll, that'll be uh, for my video work and for digital work um, if I run out of film or I want to shoot some digital whatever. Now for video gear, I've got this, um, right now I'm just storing this stuff and this will uh, probably be what it comes in, I don't know. This is an old Pro Mini Trekker AW and um, in here, I've got the um, stuff falling out. Those are the batteries for the uh, X-T3. And I've got the 10 to 24, which is what I'm using to film. And I've got the 55 to 200. And I've got the 18 to 55. And somewhere around here, I've got a, a Samyang fisheye. Not sure where that went. Um, and then I've got like a dozen batteries and another cable release. And it's kind of cool that all the cameras use the same kind of old fashioned cable release, which I think is neat. And I've got a GoPro 7 somewhere. Um, yeah, so I got to figure out where that is. So that is the gear as of August 2020. And um, I've got a trip to uh, Central Oregon two weeks from now. And at the end of September, we've got the trip to Colorado. 
and at the beginning of November we've got a trip to Zion and in the middle of uh, January we've got a trip uh, Death Valley tentatively somewhere south it might be uh, southern Utah like Colorado um, Four Corners region kind of in there I don't know I'm still playing out by ear and of course it depends on the weather too so um, if the, we're kind of set on the 18th to the 18th to the 22nd of January. And if, uh, if the weather is bad, then that's not going to happen. So anyway, that's, what's in the bag, August, 2020. And now I need to, oh, and also there is a, um, Mavic mini drone around here somewhere. Uh, not Mavic mini. No, it isn't. It's a, it's a Mavic air two. Um, I waited a long time to pick up a drone. I wasn't sure I wanted to get one. When the Mavic Air 2 came out and all the reviews came out, I mean, it kind of was the sweet spot. And, and it really is. It's great. I mean, it's a lot of fun. So, um, so okay, there's that. So that's Ed with Photo Universe. Thanks for watching. And stay tuned. we got so, a lot of stuff coming. Appreciate it. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys later.